All right, hello again. So this video is going to be telling us a few things about Newton's uh, law of gravity, his fourth law, if you will. We've covered Newton's three laws. We talked a little bit about what gravity is, the way that we kind of think about it on Earth and how it's related to our weight. But now we want to put some of those thoughts together and take it universal. So universal means not just what we're doing on Earth, but what about the Earth and the Moon or the Earth and the Sun? So this is Newton's universal law of gravity or more formally gravitation. Okay. And this is not just for Earth, not just on Earth, not just the way that we experience gravity. And that means that we have to think about two objects and just one. We said when we're on Earth, we think of gravity as this force pulling us towards the Earth, right? It sort of seems one way. Well, that's not a complete view. Uh, gravity is a two-way force. It is attractive, right? It pulls. Um, gravity is an attractive force, but it's also mutual. It is a two-way thing, two-way street, two-way force um, between any two objects that have mass. It's not just the Earth pulling on you. You also pull on the Earth. The problem is the Earth is so, so big that we don't experience the Earth moving. Earth doesn't trail behind us because we're pulling on it because it's a lot bigger than we are. So now we have to think about objects that are maybe a little closer in size. Me and the Earth is not a very good example because we don't experience any difference. But when we start to think about the Earth and the Sun or the Earth and the Moon, it, it, it is a slightly more obvious, not always, but slightly, that it acts on both bodies. So gravity, mutual means that the force goes both ways. And this is where Newton's third law comes into play, that you have gravity as an equal size opposite direction force. So the Earth pulls on the Moon and the Moon pulls on the Earth, right? Think of the tides, right? The tides are caused by the Moon tugging on the Earth. The Moon goes around the Earth because the Earth tugs on the Moon. You have two masses Right? The Earth has a mass, the Moon has a mass. They're not the same, but they both have mass. But it turns out that the force, the force, not the acceleration, we're talking a force now, is equal and opposite. I know it's not intuitive, but it's true. Okay, so we're going to spend some time thinking about this. We're going to do a lecture tutorial about it. So just follow along here. Um, we'll have some clicker questions, all kind of good stuff to, to kind of sort this out because it's not what we experience every day. So let's talk about what Newton's universal law of gravitation means. Let's sort of build it up. One of the important things that comes out of it is if you have more mass, you have more force. The greater, oops, sorry, the greater the mass, the greater the force. This is very similar to what we saw with Newton's second law. Remember, force is related to mass. You add more mass on the cart, you have to put more force to move the cart. Okay, force and mass are very, um, closely related. But when we take this universal view, we have to remember that mass isn't one, but two, right? Um, so it involves both masses, 
not just one of them. Okay, so it doesn't really matter um, if one is bigger than the other. Both masses are important. Think back to what we said about your weight on different planets. We said you had a different gravity, experienced a different force, because the planet was a different mass. Not you. Your mass didn't change. The planet's mass changed. And so you experienced the force differently. Both masses matter. Your mass and the planet's mass. The Earth's mass and the Moon's mass. Whatever two objects you're talking about. Okay? So the force is actually the multiplication, the product of two masses. We'll see that. And if either one of these masses goes up, then the force is going to go up. Okay? So that's just think about it in terms of mass first. Now, let's think about it in terms of distance. Because distance also matters in gravity. It turns out that gravity gets weaker as you get farther away. You might have guessed that, right? The greater the distance between your two objects, greater the distance between the objects, the weaker the force. So mass makes the force stronger, but distance farther away makes the force weaker. This is the force due to gravity. Okay. This is what we call inversely proportional. If you're a math person, that means as the distance gets bigger, we separate these objects apart. The force here gets smaller. Okay, so we have these two different competing ideas. One has to do with mass and the other has to do with distance. Now we put it all together and I am going to give you an equation. But as I said before, you won't put numbers in into it, but it's all about relationships. Sometimes the equation can help you um, understand the relationships. If it doesn't, just memorize the relationships. <laughs> okay, so put it all together. And let's look at this equation sort of piece by piece. Don't let your eyes glaze over because it's math, okay? Um, let's look. F. That is a force, right? You're familiar with forces, push, pull. This is the force due to gravity. Okay. Now, here are these two competing things we were talking about. The masses, right? This is the mass of both objects. So the masses of two objects, mass one and mass two. Me and the Earth, the Earth and the Moon, the Moon and the Sun, whatever. The Earth and the Sun, I don't know, anything. doesn't really matter. Um, and this, R, is the distance between the objects. Okay? Then there's this G. We'll get back to the G in just a second. But first, what I want you to see, I'll change my color here, is that both masses matter. Mass 1, mass 2. They are multiplied together. Neither one has a greater influence. The Earth doesn't have more influence. The Sun doesn't have more influence. Because if these masses go up, this force goes up. It doesn't matter which one. Sometimes it helps to do numbers as an example. Okay, so say that this is 10 and this is 20. When I multiply 10 times 20, I get 200. So this force is somehow related to 200. But then what if I come along and I say, oh no, I want to make that mass actually bigger, right? Um, this mass, I'm going to move to a different planet. I'm going to move to Jupiter. And so all of a sudden, this mass becomes bigger, 50. So now 5 times 10, or 50 times 10 is 500. And this F also went up. Doesn't matter which mass changes. If one of the masses goes up, 
the force goes up. All right, that's our first relationship. Mass goes up, force goes up. Our second relationship here is distance. Distance is on the bottom. We divide by distance. If you divide by a big number, right, R gets big, we divide by some big number, 100, then force is going to go down. This 500 divided by 100, oh, that becomes 5, right? But if I divide by a smaller number, then I get something different. Let me go back. Keep tracking with me here, you guys. You got this. If I divide by 10 instead of by 100, then my force is bigger. So it's an inversely proportional relationship. Basically, it tells us that I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you all too much. Um, it tells us a couple of different things. It tells us that force increases if either one of the masses, mass 1 or mass 2, increases. But it tells us that the force decreases, um, well, that should be if, if the radius or the distance increases, right? R gets bigger, F gets smaller. M gets bigger, F gets bigger, right? Last piece of this puzzle here, what is this G? G is constant, okay? Um, Newton actually didn't know what it was. Um, today, physicists are still working on it. If you really want to know, it's um, best value about 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Um, weird units, meters cubed per kilogram, second squared, whatever. It's just a number. And it's a universal number. This is a universal constant. The cool thing about it is, though, uh, we can take this number and we can apply it to any planet. Remember little g? This is kind of an aside, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Remember that little g, the acceleration due to gravity? Little g is just this universal constant that applies to anybody anywhere times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. This little g means that the force equals little g times mass of whatever your thing is. Force equals mass times acceleration, Newton's second law. If I lost you with that, that's OK. I just want you to notice that Newton's universal law is the same as Newton's second law. It's a special case for gravity, and it has the special arrangement of numbers. Okay, but it's actually the same thing. All right, y'all, guys, you can do this. You totally, totally got this. Um, let's look at clicker questions here. And if you are still like, I'm not sure I'm getting it, we're going to do a lecture tutorial about this, um, and it's going to be totally good, okay? So here's the first one. Notice I'm just changing one of the masses. I'm taking you to a planet that has a bigger mass than Earth. What's going to happen to your weight? Weight is a force due to gravity, okay? Second question. Um, Earth and Moon have gravitational force between them. Moon is smaller. That's all this number is saying, that the mass of the Moon is much smaller than the mass of the Earth. What does that mean about the mutual equal size opposite direction forces? Hint, hint. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, I think... That's it on those clicker questions. We will do the lecture tutorial next time.